today because I wasn't happy with what I saw. So today, I think it's the fifth. And of course, I forgot the number that you just said. Or I wasn't paying attention. Eight, twelve, and twenty. Eight, twelve, Eight, and twenty. And twenty. These are all on page two fifteen. So uh, we start with eight. 2x to the third plus x squared y minus xy cubed equals 2. So the question is asking us to uh, determine dy over dx. When we're asked to find dy over dx, two things are very clear. Number one is that y is a function of x, awesome. And number two, that we cannot solve, in other words, we, are, we cannot solve this equation for y. We will apply a procedure that we, whenever we apply a procedure to an equation, we do the same thing to both sides. If we square both sides, if we take the square root to both sides, if we add 5x to both sides, if we divide both sides by 10, everything happens to both sides. And in this case, we want to differentiate. Okay. I want to see how you differentiate to x cubed. 6x squared. Right. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. There is no function in there. It is just a variable. Okay. Perfect. Plus. How do we differentiate x squared y? 2x. Uh, yeah. Two functions. Oh, it's the product it's rule. Product. It's the product rule. Be very careful. This is function one and this is function two. So now you have to give me a sum of two terms. When we differentiate the first function, what do we get? 2x. And times the second one. So the first term will be? Very good. Now the second term, we copy the first function. And we have to differentiate the function y that we do not have. What do I have then? Uh, then it's dy. Then is dy over dx. Minus. Please put parentheses and write two terms inside parentheses. And what do we get on the right hand side, please? Um, 3xy squared. Right, I was asking about the right hand side. That's okay, that's okay. Good, so oh, yes, oh, so we sorry. have to apply the product rule again, awesome. You need the negative outside. You don't want to mess with the constant in front or the negative. Just wait, create those two, put those two terms in there, and then distribute. Because you may forget to distribute if you don't do that. I recommend that. You choose your own style or you you create your own style. Okay, so I differentiate the fun function, I get yes, so y cubed plus I different I keep the first function, I differentiate the second one. What do I get? Three dy dx. Three y squared dy over dx. Dy over dx. Are all steps understood? Can you write yes. that x times 3y squared dy dx? Can you write it as 3y squared or no? Is it 2? You mean here? Or 3xy squared? Yeah. Oh, you can. A product, a product is commutative and associative. So, or multiplication is commutative, meaning 2 times 3 times 5 is 5 times 2 times 3 is 3 times 2 times 5. It doesn't matter. So, if it's a product. The same in a sum, not in a different, not in a, a difference. In a difference, you can, but you have to make sure you you move the sign. But you cannot do that in a ratio. Okay, good. So now let's clean it up a little bit. So this is six x squared plus two x y plus x squared dy over dx minus y cubed minus three x y squared dy over dx equals zero. If you forget the right hand side, you are not going to solve, right? You cannot forget the right hand side. Now remember this is what we are after. So these two terms should stay on the left. Everything else 
this should go, this should go, this should go. Now this is basically a linear equation in dy over dx. Not a big deal. So x squared minus 3xy squared dy over dx equals y cubed minus 6x squared minus 2xy. You can arrange them in the order you like. I just don't like having a negative reading coefficient. Why well, doesn't really matter here? And finally, we divide both sides by the coefficient of dy over dx. To get dy over dx, we get y cubed minus 6x squared minus 2xy x squared minus 3xy squared. Yes, initially, this doesn't look like a friendly problem, right? But it's not such a big deal after we look at it carefully. Would you agree? Any questions on this problem at any step? Anything? Is this okay? Yeah. Anything? Okay. We, okay, that's fine. That's why we're going to work on any problem. And we can do that any time. You always remember, I always ask you a question first. So this is what I want to do because uh, if you, if we don't have communication, if you, if you don't ask questions and I don't answer, then why I'm here, right? So that's, I live for your questions. Okay, uh, the next one in line is number 12. Number 12. Cosine xy equals 1 plus sine y, and um, this is my page 2. A long time ago when I started doing this, I dropped them on the floor once, and I said, no, I'm not going to do it again. It took me five minutes to put them back together. No, I'm not sure that there is a number there. Okay, same thing. We cannot solve for y. We are asked to find dy over dx, which means x is the independent variable and y is the function. So we differentiate the left as well as the right. Now carefully, can anyone tell us what's the right on the left hand side? You're going to have to make your sign x, y. Very good. So it always, <coughs> yes, you can start from the inside to the outside. I don't recommend it when you differentiate though, because you may lose track of what's happening. So please start with differentiating the outer times, because this is the chain rule, times the derivative of the inner. Always from the outer to the inner. Indeed, so we have negative sine xy multiplied by the product rule. You know you, you expect the sum for that reason. Yes, because the first function prime is 1, so this is y plus x times, yes. Everyone with me? Is this better? Okay, equals. On the other side, please. Yes, then, yes. And yes, this is it. Yeah, I mean, it needs cleaning up, it needs distributing, it needs moving terms around, and then solving for dy over dx. But this is basically it. So I'm going to distribute negative sign xy to these two terms and move those terms with dy over dx to one side and leave alone the terms without dy over dx to the other side. So this is negative y sine xy minus x sine xy dy over dx equals cosine dy over dx. So I will keep this term here. I will move this term to the other side and factor out dy over dx. So the left hand side is negative y sine xy and the other side is x sine xy plus ah, ah, sorry cosine y please I, I 
omitted y here. Sorry. Plus cosine y, everything times dy over dx. This term was negative. I moved it to the other side, it became positive, and I factored out dy over dx. Yes? Yeah. Um, so I have this term here, which is negative x and finally we have this over this. So dy over dx, negative y sine xy, x sine xy plus cosine y. If you want to put that in parentheses, that's fine too. Do we feel better about this? Yeah. Yes? Good. Any questions? Kaysen, go ahead. Um, I don't think I wrote something down. Maybe you go back? No, I feel like I missed something. So I wrote this thing to the other side, it was negative, it became positive now. But since these two terms have dy over the x already factored out, so I don't have to write it twice. So I factor out dy over the x, at the same time moving this term to the other side. Okay. I'm trying to, I'm not lazy, but I'm trying to cut back because they they become quite lengthy. If we can, if we, uh, if it's not clear, I can write the intermediate step again. Do you want me to write the intermediate step? Oh no, you're good. I just, I don't think I have another sign now. Any questions on this problem? Yes, please. Uh, so. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. Yes. But the derivative of sine is positive. It's positive, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Good. Anything else here? Okay, we are moving on to the last problem so far. And I think you said number 20. Yes, yes it was 20. Tangent x minus y equals y over 1 plus x squared. Yes, I agree. This is, this is um, at least for now, I don't know, we'll see in a moment. Uh, it appears to be slightly messy. I agree. Okay, we, there is no way we can solve this equation for y, so let's differentiate the left-hand side, differentiate the right-hand side, like we just did. Good. The left hand side, can anyone differentiate the left hand side, please? Secant squared. Yes. Uh, x minus 1. Very good. Multiplied by 1 minus dy dx. Excellent. So the left hand side is done. I differentiate the outer function first. I get secant squared of the same argument, of course. And now multiply by the inner function prime, which is 1 minus dy over dx. Agreed with the left hand side? Yes? Okay, the right hand side. Well, the right hand side is a ratio. Quotient rule. Quotient rule, absolutely. I will write 1 plus x squared, everything squared, so I don't forget what I'm trying to do. I know that I have to have a difference of two terms in the numerator. And I start by differentiating the numerator times the denominator minus the numerator times the denominator prime. So I differentiate the top. What do I get? Perfect. Multiply by 1 plus x squared, which is the denominator, minus. I copy the numerator and um, multiply by the denominator prime, which is? 2x. You know I'm, I'm using these uh, uh, rules, quotient rule and product rule, in 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2 method. You can twist them the way you like. As long as it's correct, I'm fine. Okay? If you like this, 1, 2, 1, 2, use it because you're not going to forget what you need to, what, what is next in the problem. But I accept any method as I mentioned before. Okay. Good. Now, it is messy because, remember, at this point in time, I have to separate this into two fractions. Why am I trying to do that? Why do I need to do that? 
because I need to take the oil and the DX from this whole mess out. I have to take it out somehow. If I don't, I will not be able to combine it with this. Here I'm distributing to one and to negative dy with the x, but here I have to separate into two fractions. Okay? Only because I need this. Good, the left hand side is secant squared x minus y distributed to one, and then minus secant squared x minus y distributed to whatever that is. That symbol represents the derivative of function y. And now, look what happens here. When I separate, I would have this over this, and I would simplify one of those. I'm not simplifying in the difference. I'm simplifying after I separate it into two fractions. Ready? So this is 1 over 1 plus x squared dy over the x minus 2xy over 1 plus x squared squared. Is this okay? Um, why didn't you square the one on the left? Because I had one at the top, the same with one in the denominator, so oh. I simplified okay. one, but after I separated, not before. Gotcha. So I don't want you to do this. I cannot do that. I separate it and simplify it. Okay, now we are closer to our target because now this is completely separated from the rest. Uh, what I'm going to do is move this term to the other side and move this term to the right hand side. Is that clear? Okay. So the left hand side is secant squared x minus y, but plus 2xy over 1 plus x squared squared. And the right hand side is 1 over 1 plus x squared plus secant squared x minus y. And I know I don't see any surprise. I ran out of room. So dy over dx is right in here. Anyone surprised? I'm not surprised. Okay. Good. So um, I move this term to the other side next to secant squared. And I move this term to the right hand side and also factor out the y over the x. So I have a 1 over 1 plus x squared and then plus secant squared x minus y times the y over the x right here. Finally, I will divide that by this to get the y by dx. Agreed? Perfect. So let's do that. The denominator is all this. And the numerator is that. If you want to simplify it, good luck. No, we can do that. I'm, I'm kidding. So, yes, we can simplify it a little bit. Finding the least common denominator at the top, finding the least common denominator in the denominator, and eventually there will be no denominators, top or bottom. Would you like to do that? Sure. Yes? Very good. Say it again. At least get rid of those denominators. Exactly, exactly. So, we clean it up a little bit. Not that much, but yeah. Well, could you get rid Say it again. So secant squared x minus y on top and bottom. So can I simply, that's the question, right? If I can I simply. I we were getting rid of the, uh, the actual secondary fractions in the original fraction. That I then noticed that we get rid of those two. No, because they're terms. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So if I manage to factor out, so it's a very good question. <clears throat> I can separate a fraction into two or more only if the denominator is one term. If the denominator is two or more terms, we cannot do that. So if I had just this, then yes. I would have said this over this is one, and then plus this over this. 
Yeah. But I can if there are two terms in the denominator. Got it. And I cannot simplify terms either. Okay, so in a numerator, the least common denominator is 1 plus x squared squared. In the denominator, the least common denominator is 1 plus x squared. So the numerator here at the top will be 1 plus x squared squared secant squared x minus y plus 2xy. In the denominator, we have 1 plus 1 plus x squared secant squared x minus y. It's becoming a, a bigger and bigger mess. But we will be able to simplify one of these after I flip them. So then dy over dx equals 1 plus x squared squared secant squared x minus y plus 2xy over 1 plus x squared squared. And I should multiply by 1 plus x squared over all this. 1 plus 1 plus x squared. And of course, I ran out of room. So the only thing I can do is this. Nothing else goes away. But at least we don't have fractions over fractions anymore. So I would be right. dy over dx. Maybe I should write, um, but then when I scan them, just to, for these kind of problems, but when I scan them, then you're going to have to um, rotate them. And so 1 plus x squared squared secant squared x minus y plus 2xy times 1 over 1 plus x squared and everything multiplied by this. 1 plus 1 plus x squared secant squared x minus y. Uh, these steps were not really necessary, only because we're not doing anything else with this expression. But we wanted to simplify. Yes, next question before we continue. Anything else you would like to work on? Did you find anything else? Anything? Uh, we had... Um, oh, yes. Yes. I'm trying to look for a problem. And I'll show you in a second what I'm doing. I just need to log in into a website. Uh, similar to WebAssign. I'm just logging in. I did. Because I don't have a problem. We have to choose a problem. So I'm going to choose a problem from this book. Okay, I already said that. Yes, always allow, please. Okay, um, matrices and determinants, select all. Okay, let me see uh, exactly which section. Uh, matrix solutions to linear systems. Maybe we want that. Okay. How many times do I have to show? Do I have to click on that? Okay, so.
So uh, let's choose this system or any system. I can ch we can choose uh, from the end of the chapter. It's up to you. You'll let me know. I'm assuming you want a four by four. Yes. Okay, four by four it is. This is a different uh, method. It's a Gauss-Jordan method, but it doesn't matter. Um, I'm not going to show that. I'm just going to show the inverse matrix. But we just we just have to get to. Okay, here it is. Will this still be on our next test? Well, if you're given something like finding a polynomial and you have four uh, variables, then you will have to create a system with four equations, linear equations, and you will have to solve the system. Okay, so uh, solving the system of four by four with the inverse matrix method just takes a blink. Um, but um, I don't know, I haven't, I, I did not write a test yet, so. No, no I just want to. So let's choose so this. Here are four by fours and the three by threes. You choose. So this is like 38. 38. With like the blanks. 38. Yeah, you put zero as the coefficient. That's the only problem. Oh, okay. It doesn't matter. So 38 is fine. So let's copy it. I'm going to copy it here. So 2w, I'm going to write, um, yeah, that's fine, 2w is fine. 2w plus y minus 3z equals 8. Uh, w minus x plus 4z equals negative 10. Uh, 3w plus 5x minus y minus z equals 20. And w plus x minus y minus z equals 6. So? Yes. If it, oh, so if it appears that it's a 1 and if it's blank it's a 0, because the next one has an x but no y. The first one has no Yes, yeah, so the coefficients for w are 2, 1, 3, 1. The okay. coefficients right. for x are 0, negative 1, 5, 1. The coefficients for y are 1, 0, negative 1, negative 1. And for z, negative 3, 4, negative 1, negative 1. Okay. I always tell my students that in, in my calculus class, they also learn algebra. Wouldn't you say that you learned a lot of algebra so far in this class? You will not ever hurt my feelings. Just tell me the truth. I prefer the truth over anything else. Okay, so now remember um, the coefficient matrix 2, 1, 3, 1. 1, negative 1, 5, 1. I'm reading it by columns, but in the calculator we we enter it by rows. Or you can enter it by columns as well, but normally we enter it by rows. So 1, 0, negative 1, negative 1, negative 3, 4, negative 1, negative 1. And the coefficient matrix, I mean the free terms, 8, negative 10, 20, and 6. And in order to determine the solution, if there is one, this method does not work if uh, the system has infinitely many solutions or has no solution. Careful with that. Okay, so all you have to do is determine this the uh, matrix of uh, variables by writing this. That's it. Of course, there is a theory behind it. Why we multiply on the left? And how we are allowed to, uh, in which conditions we are allowed to multiply, or we can multiply matrices, there is a long thing. Right? But for now, let's say this is all we need to do. So uh, in the graphing calculator, please enter with second and matrix. You may have different calculators. So second and matrix, and we go to edit. We will add the matrix A, which is a 4 by 4, and we will add, add the matrix B, which is a 4 by 1. Four rows, one column. Matrix, matrix A. It's a 4 by 4. And by rows, 2, 1, 1, negative 3. And press enter every time. 
uh, 1, negative 1, 0, 4. Uh, 3, 5, negative 1, negative 1. I know you're way ahead of me. Um, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1. Wait, isn't it two zero one connector sign? Because wasn't that the blank? Yes, it is zero. Thank you. Yes, it was zero. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Perfect. Get out of there with second and quit. Go back in with second and matrix. Go back to edit, but this time we've added matrix B. Highlight B, and this time is a four by one. Four rows, one column. And uh, eight, negative 10, 26. Yeah, the mouse is not cooperating. Twenty and six. Get out of there. Quit. So second and matrix. Call matrix A. Put power negative one on it. Multiplication symbol. Go back to second and matrix. Select matrix B and press enter. We get a four by one, of course, uh, which W X Y Z. So, x is the coefficient of the unknowns. 1, 3, 0, negative 2. And this is nothing else but w, x, y, z. And of course, w is 1, x is 3, y is 0, and uh, z is negative 2. We have many other methods. Kramer's rule, Gauss-Jordan, Gaussian elimination with back substitution. But this is the easiest to um, work on with the calculator. Everything else requires more work. As you saw in um, that software, my, it's my bank lab. Okay, anything else? Is there anything else you would like to go back to? Sabrina, please. Um, can we do another chain rule problem? Yes, of course. Please choose. Um, can you do number 38 on page 205? 38 mm -hmm. on 205? Yeah. Very good. 38 on 205. Yes. Uh, we did that last time or something similar, but uh, but I want to do this. So this is, I think it's k tangent, right? Uh, k tangent the square of x? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Okay. There is only one variable in these functions. Calc 1, calc 2 do not deal with variable functions with uh, of more than one variable. Two and three variables you have to wait for the calc 3. So we only have one variable here. So obviously the variable is x. k is a constant. So how many functions we see here? I see e to the x. That is the first function, the outermost function. Then I see tangent. That's the second level. And third level, the innermost, is the square of x. Agreed? OK. So I recommend just do this. So I'm differentiating e to a function. 
So then dy over dx, you don't have to do it for this, this is not a place of differentiation, but I prefer dy over dx versus y prime, but it doesn't matter in this case. So e to a function prime is e to that function. Now, I no longer have e, I have k tangent the square of x. What is the derivative of this? The constant stays outside. When I differentiate the constant times the function, the constant stays outside. So it's going to be k. But now I'm at the second level, which is I, I need to differentiate tangent of the square of x. So this is, yes? Secant squared. Secant squared of the square of x. And now all I have left to deal with is the square root of x. 1 over 2 root x. 1 over 2, the square root of x. Please do not attempt to simplify these two. This is inside a function. I've seen it on your quiz. This is inside a function, and this is outside a function. So this is together, and no one can separate secant squared from its argument. I saw it in the limit. Someone, I mean, a few of you wrote the sign to it over something. Please. Okay, so you cannot separate the function from its argument. Secant squared means nothing. Secant squared x or secant squared the square of x, yes, it's a function. Okay, now let's see if I can simplify it a little bit. And uh, no, I can't, but I'm going to put k and 1 over this in front. So this is uh, k over 2 the square of x. I'm going to write e to k tangent the square of x and times secant squared the square of x. So no one is tempted to simplify the square of x by anything with anything. Very good example. Next question, please. Is there anything else? How are we doing with logarithmic differentiation? We haven't gotten there to look at problems or um, yes, please. I have Thank. One yes. Um, yes, please. Uh, so it's from the three point five. So yeah. Uh, so we have to find the derivative of that. And uh, oh, oh, sorry, what was that? So it's x to the fifth uh -huh. times x plus y. Yeah. Okay. Equals, um, y squared, 3x minus y. Okay, may I just yeah. take it out be right back? In this particular case, so this is x to the fifth x plus y equals y squared 3x minus y. Um, this is specifically, um, it's especially presented like this. Of course, I'm not going to use the product rule. I'm going to distribute. I'm going to distribute x to the fifth. I'm going to distribute y squared. And then, yes, I still have to apply the product rule, but not the product rule inside the product rule. That's what I mean. So the left-hand side will be x to the sixth plus x to the fifth y. The right hand side, 3xy squared minus y cubed. And this is more human. Although you can say, but you still have to apply the product rule twice. Yes, that's fine. But now on parentheses, that's why it's easier. I removed parentheses at least. Good. So now we are ready to differentiate implicitly. Can anyone? Steer us in the correct direction. So this is actually the plus um uh I like x to the fourth y plus um x to the fifth y or just dy. Okay. Leave the constant outside. Do not worry about the factor. Because it's it's going to be waiting patiently outside. Do not worry about that. Do not carry it inside. It's much easier to leave it alone, waiting outside for you to finish the product. Yes. Minus. Uh, it is plus plus uh, x. 
Excellent. And finally, I'm here. Excellent. Thank you. Well done. So remember, we are after this. Distribute it three first. Because then you can like factor out the two ideas and then uh, not yet, because I have to move this term here and I have to move three y squared to the other side. But okay. yes. Oh wait, 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 wait. Do you have to uh, Can't you just add that x to the fifth by dx to the sixth x to the fifth? Right now? You mean these two? No, no, the, the six x to the fifth, and then the, or can you not do that to the by dx? Right. Yeah, not, not like terms. Hmm. This is like, uh, let's say z, six z, but this is z y or z t. Right, so 6z plus zt are not like terms. So 6, x to the fifth, plus 5, x to the fourth, y. I'm going to write the whole thing one more time. Um, you are by the x uh, equals, this is equals here. Don't write plus. Which, as I just said, I'm going to write it one more time. So 3y squared plus 6xy dy over the x minus 3y squared dy over the x. This goes here. This goes here. So 6x to the fifth plus 5x to the fourth y minus 3y squared equals 6xy. Um, yes. But I had to distribute first. Yeah. yeah yes. So now these three terms have dy over dx, they have to be together on one side, isolated, because they, they are the ones that have the variable. This is all a linear equation right now. Okay, and this term goes to the other side, changing its sign. Of course, this goes to this side, changing its sign, and then I, I like to do it in one step and factor out. So I had copy uh, 6 um, xy and the negative 3y squared, and then so the minus x to the fifth. So far so good? Okay, so then finally we have the expression for dy over dx. Yes, I understand they initially uh, look complicated, like a, a lot of gibberish in there, right? Um, but once you um, see what's happening, you cannot unsee, Yeah. right? I, I wasn't thinking that there was a plus sign in front of the x to the fifth on the left side. And that's why I was like, I, I don't know why I was doing that. That's okay. <laughs> oh. So 6x to the 5th plus 5x to the 4th y minus 3y squared, 6xy minus 3y squared minus x to the 5th. And that is absolutely final. Good, very good questions. Then is this okay? Better? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, right when we started, I got a little bit into it and I realized what was going on. Right. So that's always my recommendation. Always, always. Always try to think to, or when you're given a problem, try to simplify it. Obviously, it has some catch in there, right? And, you know, if you simplify it, it's much easier to differentiate. Also, factoring. Always keep that in mind, in the back of your mind, right? Factoring will always simplify things. If it doesn't, then don't use it. But most of the time, it will simplify things.
good. Perfect questions. Anything from 3.5 or 3.6? Logarithmic differentiation, uh, derivatives of log functions, anything? Anything? Um, you may have not gotten there yet, but maybe you have. Are you going to give us like implicit different differentiation with like, um, the point? Yes, let's do that. Do you have another example? The next year you solve this one. Oh right? no, this is just notes from something. I was just reading. Okay, that. so you want uh, to, you want to work on this one? Yeah, that one. Yeah, that one. Perfect. Of course. Or or or. Unless it's yeah. Yeah, plenty. Here they are. Page two fifteen. Oh, but it's up to you. Can you tell me if you want this one or another one? Um, yes, any of these. Um, do do number 30. Number 30. Where are you 30? I see. 30 on page 215. So this is x to 2 thirds plus y to 2 thirds equals 4, and the point is negative 3, the square root of 3, comma 1. Everything is the same, it's just at the very end after we get the expression for dy over the x, we're going to plug this in. This is it. For x and y. Exactly. And not, you don't That's it. That's it. Let's do that. Yes, I don't think I showed an example, I just made up one, and uh, then I, I think we did look at an example, but it's not enough. An example is never enough. Okay, very good. So forget about this. We differentiate implicitly. Although, although I have to caution you, this equation we can't solve for us. We can't. We can't. We move x to two thirds to the other side, and then we uh, cube first, and then take the square root. But it would become a little bit difficult, uh, awkward, um, difficult, cumbersome to work with that function when we differentiate. So it's better to do this. But in this case, we can solve for y. In the previous case, absolutely not. Or all the other cases we looked at, we can't. Y cubed, it's all it all depends on x. Nothing we've seen before, at least not today. I can solve this for x. I'm sorry, for y, of course. I can solve this for y, nothing. But this one happens that we can. But we shouldn't. Okay, so I bring down two thirds and subtract one from the power. That is the easy part because it's just the variable. Two thirds minus one is negative one third. Agreed? Okay, then plus two thirds y still to negative one third, but times. Yes. And uh, the other side is really nice. Yes. Of course, zero. Yeah. Very good. So then, um, first of all, I'm going to multiply everything by 3 halves to get rid of those numbers. I don't like them. So I have x to negative 1 third plus y to negative 1 third dy over dx equals zero. Or dy over dx equals x to negative 1 third with minus in front, of course, over y to negative one-third. Because I have to move this term to the other side. And it becomes negative. But now here's what happens. Both exponents are negative, so I'm going to do this and change the positive exponent. Is this okay so far? Mm -hmm. Wait, so you got rid of the two-thirds on Multiplying both sides by 3 halves. 2 thirds times 3 halves is 1, 2 thirds times 3 halves is 1, 0 times 3 halves is 0. Remember, simple. I want simple. I don't want numbers if they are redundant. I don't want negative exponents. 
I don't want negative leading coefficient. You can say I'm bossy. No, I'm teaching you to simplify everything. So this is x to negative one third goes to the numerator, which is the cube root. Uh, y to negative one third goes to the numerator, which is the cube root of y, and the denominator is the cube root of x. I don't like negative exponents. I want them gone. And now I evaluate this derivative for x equals negative 3, the square root of 3, and for y equals 1. Because that is the point that was given to us. So after I determine the function that represents dy over dx, or the expression of dy over dx, then all I have to do is determine the slope of the tangent line to the graph at this, at this point, to the graph of the equation, at this point, and I know the steepness of the tangent line, or how fast is the, the expression or the, the uh, equation uh, changing at that time. But it's a function, so I can still say function for this one. Okay, so we have negative in front. The cube root of 1 is just 1. The cube root of this, uh, I'm going to put the integers in, so this will become the square root of uh, 27 with minus in front. Um, a negative at the top or negative in front with negative, the cube root is of negative is a negative number, so the final simplified form will be this. So when we take the cube root of the square root, we multiply the indices and get 6. So this is the slope. Uh, we are asked to find the equation of the tangent. Uh, yes, find the equation of the tangent line to the curve at the given point. So this is just a slope. So then y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1, where y1 is 1 and uh, x1 is negative 3, the square root of 3. And the slope is all this. So y minus 1, 1 over the 6 root of 27, and x minus the square root of 27. So y equals 1 over the 6 root of 27 times x. Um, minus the square root of 27 over the 6 root of 27, and then plus 1. We can simplify this a little bit. This is 3 to... Um, three halves, and this is three to three sixths, or one half. And we, we could have simplified it from here, because I can replace 27 by three cubed, and this is three raised to three over six, which is three to one half, or the square of three. And I'm gonna do that. So then I copy the base, three over two, divided by 1 over 2, I mean minus 1 over 2 is 2 over 2, so this is 1. Negative 3 plus 1 will be negative 2. So then y equals 1 over the square root of 3, x minus 2. So I simplify the 6 root of 27, changing 27 into 3 cubed, and going back to write 3 over 6 the power over the index. A 3 over 6 is 1 half, so that is the square root of x, the uh, square root of 3. So um, this changed into the square root of 3. Now when I simplify this, I change this into 3 to the third, 3 over 2, and this is 3, the same thing, to 1 half. Copy the base, subtract from 3 over 2, 1 over 2, get 2 over 2, which is power 1, 
So negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. It was a very interesting pick. Thank you.